There we go. If you refresh, if you refresh the stream, you should see it. I'm gonna mute, I'm gonna mute myself in Discord, but I can still hear. The echo, the echo will be from yourself. It's not me. It's you're echoing to yourself. Um, I'll, we'll give it a, a couple of minutes. So anything I want turns up, and then um, if you want to, if you guys in the Discord want to jump into different team, you can create room and jump into different teams together if you want. But I'll probably start like in ten minutes or so. So if you want to, you can create teams with each other or whatever you want to do. If there's anyone else about watching, well, we'll start in 10 minutes. I might start a little bit. Let's see, what, let's see how things go on. So once the English Discord people get sorted, we'll start in about three minutes. Th set up and ready for the, the quiz and I can end up talking to myself because I'm and then I will start about yeah there's nine people watching and uh, six people on discord so I guess the guess is a couple of people strewn about watching just on here and on discord which is perfectly fine and I hope you uh you enjoy the quiz as and when it happens. So the so our little quiz here, we got a little general thing of looking back, although to be honest, it kind of fell apart from that a little bit as we went through. But Overall, we should um, have a nice little, you know, little time here. We've got five rounds, and I'll show you the rounds in a second. Anyone on Nightline better, bet, we got Nightline around at the end. Anyone on Nightline better get a high mark on that, or they're going to be in some trouble. I'm looking at you, Holly. So. I'll just chuck up the rounds here, give a second to the food. But we start off with music, sport. I'll have a little mm, bit of Loughborough general knowledge kind of thing. We'll see. Ah, no, it's not Loughborough. That's incorrect, actually. 
music, sport, and it's what country would you be in if? Then it's general knowledge, then it's not on history. You see I've already messed up this first slide, but that's fine. We'll continue on in a second. So, for the first round and the first question of the quiz, it's going to be music. So the theme of this, as you can see, is a blast of the past all the way to 1950s. Thank you very much, Arshna, for making this round. And um, no cheating, Arshna. I know you'll get the answers right because you bloody well made it. So, starting off, question one. Which of these is the top song from 2020 till now? I should also turn my microphone up a bit. I will just try that there. And then it's the highest it's going to go, and I'll try and speak a bit louder though, mate, if you can't hear me. So, question one, which is the first, which of the top songs from 2020 till now? A, Mood, 24K Golden Features. So, sorry, just got a bit distracted there for a So, which of these is the top song from 2020 till now? Mood, 24K, Golden Featuring, Ian Dore. B, Positions, Arena Grande. C, You Broke Me First, Tate McRae. And welcome to anyone who just joined on Discord. And we're going to move on to question two. So, which of these is the top song from 2019? Is it A, Bad Guy, Billy Eilish, B, Old Town Road, Lil Nas X, C, Someone You Loved, Luke by Lewis Capaldi? I'll give a couple more seconds just to overview of some of those answers, and we'll move on to question three. So move on to question three. Which of these is the top song from the 2010s decade? Is it A, Party Rock Anthem, LMFA featuring Lauren Bennett and Green Rock, B, Uptown Funk by Mark Ronson featuring Bruno Mars, is it C, Shape of You by Ed Sheeran? I'll give you a couple more minutes to debate and arguing in there between your teams of the answers and then I'll move on to the next, next question. Question four. Which of these is the top song from the 2000s decade? So, question four. Which of these is the top song from the 2000s decade? Is it A, Jay-Z, 99 Problems, B, Beyonce, Crazy in Love, C, Hey Ya, from Outkast? Honestly, I wouldn't know the answer to most of these questions. That's why I should read the quiz. I am terrible with music, so... I'm glad I'm the one presenting it, not the one asking the questions. Answering the questions. I will give you a little bit more time to answer these. Okay, and then we want to question five. Oh, skip one there. Never mind. Question five. Which of these is the top song from the 1990s decade? A. Smells Like Teen Spirit by Navarro. No, no. Do that. B. No Piggity by Blackstreet. Or C. A classic and um, one of my favourites, Wonderball by Oasis. So that's, that's again. Which of these are the top songs from the 1990s decade? And I'll let you read them off there and give you a couple of couple of seconds to come up with an answer. I do like a bit of Wonderwall, although everyone and them and their mother seems to be able to play it on a guitar. It seems to be very classic for that, so if there's anyone's out of that play on the guitar, congratulations. I think I might actually think I actually used to be able to play on the guitar, but that was quite a while ago now. So moving on to question six. So which of these is the top song from the 1980s decade? Living on a Prayer by Bon Jovi. I Want to Dance with Somebody, Whitney Houston. And Don't Stop Believing, Journey. 
I'll give you a couple. I'll give you about 30 se- uh, 20 seconds to go over this and have a look for the answer. And if you're not filled up by the questions, which of these are the top from the 1980s decade? Well, I'm sorry, that's the way it is. As you can tell, we're going back in time a bit here. So, and as two fairs, we go back in time more and more, the better they get, in my opinion. But don't know if that's unpopular or not. So again, which of these are the top songs from the 1980s decade? And I move on to question seven. And which of the top, which of these are the top songs from the 1970s decade? Is it A, Dancing Queen, ABBA, B, Wonderful Tonight by Eric Clapton, and C, September by Earth, Wind and Fire? Of these three, I wouldn't have a clue which one is, I'm afraid, so I can't really much help there. However, I can say, I do love a good, uh, my, I do love a bit of Dancing Queen at Fiapa, a very good old classic. Although I'm not really sure on the other two, but I might have heard, I probably have heard them before. So again, question seven. Which of these are the top song from the 1970s decade? Is it A, Dancing Queen, B, Wonderful Tonight, or C, September? And I'll give you another 10, 15 seconds just to come up with what you're going for. So right, we'll move on to question eight. Which of these is the top song for the 1960s decade? Going back a bit now, I see. Although, um, yeah, Matt, you, maybe Matt will remember them. He's getting old a bit. So the, the answers here for this question is A, Can't Help Falling in Love by Elvis Presley with the Jordan, Jordanaires, my bad. B, Sweet Caroline by Neil Diamond, a classic. And The Way You Look Tonight by Frank Sinatra, another old timey hero of music. So again, which of these are the top songs from the 1960s decade? Can't Help Feel it Falling In Love, Sweet Caroline, or The Way You Look Tonight. Got two more questions and we'll go through the answers and we'll see how many you got. I'm, 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 I'm hoping that people get four or five out of the ten. Although to be honest, if I took this quiz, I'd be lucky to get four or five. So we'll see how it goes. Hopefully we've got some music experts around the, out there. Now moving on to question nine. Which of these is the top song from the 1950s decade? Again, we're going back in time. Snaking our way through music history. Option one, A, J.R.S. Rock, Elvis Presley, classic. Come Fly With Me, Frank Sinatra, and That's Some More by Dean Martin. Again, going back to the 50s, which of these are the top songs from that decade? I can't say I've heard of that some more, although I probably should have done. Although every time I think of Come Fly With Me, I'm thinking of EasyJet, which is something that's really unrelated to the music. But, alas. So finally, question nine, which of these are the top songs from the 1950s of decade? And I'll move on to question ten. Finally, for the last of the music round, I'm sure people will be singing the praises of this now this music round is over. Which of these is the all-time most played song? Hey Jude by The Beatles, Smells Like Teen Spirit by Navarro, and C, Hotel California, The Eagles. Once you go, you can never leave. I do love a good Hotel California, I have to say. I remember playing Guitar Hero for many, many times, but yeah. So, question 10. Which of these is the all-time most played song? Hey Jude? Smells Like Teen Spirit, or Hotel California. So I think I'll go through the answers. I'm just going to check something, but I think we'll go through the answers here. And then, so I get ready to count them up. Let me just find the uh, sheet of the answers. There we go. So, for question one, the answers for question one, are you ready? If someone wants to let me know you're ready um, in Discord by just like sending it in the Discord quiz chat, 
or by um, writing in the uh, top chat of the um, the YouTube, that'd be very much appreciated. So I can now I can get onto the answers. Or if you want another question repeated, do say that in the quiz chat in Discord, or say that in the YouTube chat. Either or. I'm gonna have to wait a bit for a response. It's a bit of a slowdown here, so I'm just gonna have to give me a second while I wait for responses from people. Cool, I got the first response from Team Alana. There already. And Holly is ready, awesome. So, we will move to the answer to question one. Which of these is the top song from 2020 till now? Well, the answer is A, Mood, and a very weird um, Who's By, 24 Golden, featuring Ian Dorr. So the answer to question number one is A. There were, all the answers will come up at the end, so you know if you've missed any or not sure, they'll look on the end and I'll leave it there for a bit so you can give it a go. So, question two. Which of these is the top song from 2019? B, Old Town Road, Lil Nas X. So that's B, Old Town Road, Lil Nas X. Not again, not sure I could give you this one, so I'm glad you're the ones doing the quiz and not me. Question three. Which of these is the top song from the 2010s decade? So, answer this one is B, Uptown Funk, by Mark Ronson, featuring Bruno Mars. Another classic, I have to say. I do love a bit of Uptown Funk. And so moving on to question four. Which of these is the top song from the 2000s decade? Apparently it's C, Hey Yeah by Outkast. I think I've heard of that one, but I couldn't be sure to be honest. But the answer to that one is C, Hey Yeah. Moving on, I think, to question five. Which of these is the top song from the 1990s decade? The answer to this one is A, Smells Like Teen Spirit, by Nirava. Nirava. Oh, no. Ah, I'll get that right in a minute. I'm not very good with that name, to be honest. But she's featuring here as A, as the top song from the 1990s. And we will move on to question six. Which of these is the top song from the 1980s decade? One of my classic favourites, the answer to this one is C, Don't Stop Believing. And Alana, I've just seen you ask for the answers. If, if you give me till the end, they'll all come up and you'll be able to double check then. So just bear with me and I'll get through it and I'll leave it on the final slide and you can see them. Question seven. Which of these is the top song from the 1970s decade? Now that is B, Wonderful Tonight. So, sorry, I was reading the comments there. Which of these tops are from the 1970s? Question 7 is B, Wonderful Tonight by Eric Clapton. And finally, well not finally, two from finally actually. Question 8, which of these is the top song from the 1960s decade? We're going to go with B, the answer is B, Sweet Caroline. Another classic that I think everyone here knows the, knows the words to and enjoys singing. And I'm sure someone's going to start singing it. And question nine, the penultimate one. Which of these are the top songs from the 1950s decade? That one is C, That's Some More by Dean Martin. So that's C for question nine. Moving on, the, the final question and the final answer. Which of these is the all-time most played song? Is question 10 is A, Hey Jude by the Beatles. A very, very famous one, that one. And as I as promised, all the answers will come up here. And if, you, if you've missed one, you can hop on here. I would ask if the teams in Discord would like to post their score in, the, uh, in either the um, YouTube chat or in the um, quiz chat. Probably the YouTube chat would be better. That would be great. So we can see how everyone's, everyone's getting on and see how things are going. So that's uh, Holly's team and Alana's team. 
And if anyone else? Anyone else, feel free to pop on there as well. It's up to you, really. And Arshana, if you want to pop in your ones, I bet you'll get 10 out of 10. Don't worry, you didn't do very well on this one. They get easier. Arshana's a, a cruel, cruel mistress, I'm afraid, on, on her music rounds. So they will, don't worry, they will get a lot easier. Because this is, as I will admit, this, this was quite a hard round. <laughs> Matt in there with a one. Starting off strong. Yeah, so, looking in for our next round, it's sports. This one is significantly amount easier, have no fear, so, if you struggle with that one, hopefully you can do a little, you'll do a little bit better on this one. So, if everyone's ready, let me know in the YouTube with a, a, a Lana or Holly or whoever's group, just let me know on YouTube you're ready and we'll get cracking on. It's gonna have the, we've got a little bit of a lag on the YouTube, so I'll have to wait here for a second. I oh, see there, Alani, you got two. So you've doubled Matt's score. Happy days. <laughs> I think, Arsenal, you need to, next time you're at a quiz, Arsenal, you might need to turn it down a little bit. You're going to hurt some people's feelings, I think. If you just give me a second. Handy one. Mm -hmm. They can hear Animal Crossing in the background. <laughs> Sorry. Do you want to go in the other you go the bedroom? No, I've, I've just turned it down. It's okay. alright. Anyway. <laughs> I heard there's some little background noise there. And yes, it is Animal Crossing. She's, it's all good though, it's all good. Nothing like a bit of background noise. So on the, on the absence of anyone saying they're ready, I'm gonna go anyway, because I've been waiting here a little while now. So, question one. When was the first modern Olympic Games held? Was it in 1906, 1896, or 1969? When was the first modern Olympic Games held? 1906? 1896 or 1969? I just saw a comment there from Arthur saying I've turned it down compared to the previous quiz rounds. Yeah, God help anyone who did the first one. <laughs> uh, anyway, nothing like starting off hard and then it will trust me, it'll get easier. So, moving on to question two. What was the first Olympic sport? Running? Javelin or swimming? What was the first Olympic sport? Running, javelin, or swimming? I can tell you what it, I can. To be fair, I think this is actually a surprisingly tough one, I think. However, I think you could eke it out with an educated guess, but we'll see how we do. I'll move on to the next one. Question three. What was the first sport ever recorded? Question three, what was the first sport ever recorded? Wrestling, javelin, or hockey? You can see here, uh, javelin's come up twice now, so, so maybe, it was the, maybe it was the first Olympic sport and the first sport, although I would guess the first Olympic sport is not the same as the first sport. Just a hunch there, just a clue out there for everybody, in case it wasn't blatantly obvious. Moving into question four. What is the national sport of England? Question four, what is the national sport of England? Is it A, football, B, hockey, or C, cricket? And by hockey, we're talking hockey with a ball here, not our Canadian counterpart size hockey. So is it ho hockey, football, or cricket? Football is a pretty popular sport, but then again, cricket is also quite famous in England, so it could be a tough one if you don't know the answer, which I suppose is the same for any quiz, really. So. Little nugget of wisdom there. Question five. In which year was the national sport of England declared? Which apparently, if you know the national sport, you might as well know when it was. And Ashton is being pretty cool here, giving you only three different dates. So 1946, 1973, or 1996. 
so in which year was the national sport of England declared? 1946, 1973, or 1996? And I am not just uh, gonna crap talk Arshan here about her quiz because she's done a wonderful job putting this together. So thank you very much, Arsenal, for putting the first two questions together. And although some of them are a little bit hard, you might have upset a few people. Thank you very much. So, moving into question six. In which country was the first Olympic Games held? Question six. In which country was the first Olympic Games held? So, I'm going to just specify here. It's going to, it's going to, be, a, going to be modern Olympic Games, just to be... Perfectly, perfectly clear. And also, it kind of links back a little bit to question one, if you can remember that one. But so the answers, options here are Greece, Italy, or France. So uh, I'll give it another few seconds, and we'll move on to question seven. We're definitely getting through these. It's been about half an hour, just under half an hour, and we're nearly through the first first fifteen questions. There's five rounds of ten questions, so it's not a massively long quiz. So moving on to question seven. How many people are on the Loughborough Sports Hall of Fame? Now, if you've been in Loughborough for very long, you know this gets repeated a lot. And so, and so does the next question, actually. It's one thing they love to brag about. There's one thing Loughborough loves is to brag about is how many that sports people have done well in the middle of the Olympics. So your options here are 35, 66, or 83. 35, 66, 83. So moving on to question eight. How many Olympic medals are won by the people on the Loughborough Hall of Fame? And I remember rightly, someone said something about more than more than some if Luffer was a country it would come like third in the Olympics or something. I swear I've heard that fact repeated many times. Whether it's true or not, I don't know. But see if you can guess how many medals were won by the people on, on the Luffer Hall of Fame. 47, 76, or a measly 18. I say measly, I'd be lucky to one I, I I doubt in my life I'm ever gonna even see a Olympic medal, let alone win one, let alone eighteen, so I won't bash that. So moving on to question nine. What is the oldest sport played in the UK? What is the oldest sport played in the UK? Is it A, football, B, polo, or C, rounders? I'll give a little lifeline for anyone that's struggling here. It's not the same as the national sport. So if you picked football for national sport and this question, one of them two is wrong. We'll see if that helps you out or not. And see if it causes any infighting. Oh. So, question nine, what is the oldest sport played in the UK? Football, polo, or rounders? And we'll move on to question 10, the final question of our second round, which we're flying through. Question 10, what was the first sport played on the moon? Rugby, shot put, or golf? What was the first sport played on the moon? Rugby, shot put, or golf? I'm relatively sure this was televised as well. In television at the time, of course. It was, it was the 1980s, 1970s, 1980s. But I'll give, I'll give about 10 more seconds to see if you can deliberate. And if you want any other question, questions repeating or whatever, let me know in the comments. I will give it about five minutes or so. Well, not five minutes, probably about a minute or so to see if any comments catch up. We'll move on to question one and we'll sit, we'll go through the answers as soon as I just check everyone's good to go through the answers. So if you need any questions repeating, type it in down below and I'll repeat them. But I think we should be all right. Hmm. 
I think that's a thumbs up for it. It's all right. I'll just see if, uh, who's in the other team. Um, Alana, Becca or Mike, if you let me know with a thumbs up if you're all right to move on. Also, if this, the sound, I think the sound might have changed there because I think I switched my microphone to a different one. Um, if it's too loud, let me know as well. Because I think I went from using one that was quite quiet to the proper one, which is quite loud. So let me know if it's too loud or too aggressive for you guys. Okay, so question one are the answers of the sport round. Is the answer to this on what, when was the modern Olympic Games held? Was B, 1896, a little while ago now, have to say. So answer to question one is B, 1896. And as you can see, I'm over the professional with the streaming setup. Question two, when was the first Olympic sport? The answer to this one is A, a running race. Unsurprising, really, to be honest, because if there's one sport anyone can really do with very little equipment, it's running. Although you could say the same for swimming, but at least you need a pool for swimming. You, all you need for running is a bit of earth. So, makes sense, to be honest. Question three, what was the first sport ever recorded? Now, I imagine one of the first sports... Hold on a second. Apparently we had a little bit of feedback, so I'm just going to turn my mic down. Um, I can't hear any feedback through this microphone. Um, if it needs to change, let me know and I'll use the other one. But this one is better for me, but we'll see. Yeah, just a momentary technical glitch. I'm just waiting for some responses from some people, in the, some of the crowd, if this is uh, all right or not. So if you just give me a second and bear with us. Okay, I think that might be improved now. I've been told, I've been told that's a bit better, so we'll crack on again. Ever the professional, as I see. First time with OBS. I got no idea what I'm doing. But welcome to Nightline, I'm afraid. We know what we're doing when it comes to calls, but when it comes to tech or anything like that, God help us all. So question three, what was the first sport ever recorded? The answer to that was A, wrestling. I believe it probably was around Roman or Greek times, but it could have even been before that. I don't actually know. But wrestling it is. Question four. The national sport of England. I think the answer to this is not going to surprise anybody, to be honest. C, cricket. Very famously played across India, Australia, with England. England have spread cricket quite far and wide. So the answer to that one, question four is C. Question five. In which year was the national sport of England declared? Now, if you knew the previous one, you probably know this one. But only in 1973, so that's B... 1973. Quite a while, not too as far ago as you would have thought, to be honest. But there we go. Moving on to question six. In which country was was the first Olympic Games held? I think this I think this might be a bit self-evident. Some people, maybe not others. Will, I don't know. But the answer is A, Greece. I think people will be aware of the Ele Greek legends involving Olymp Mount Olympus and stuff. So. I don't think it will surprise anybody it's Greece, to be honest, but it could have been a tricky one to get get right. Question seven. How many people are on the Loughborough Sports Hall of Fame? Smack down the middle with a B of 66. So if you went smack down the middle, you're bang right with a B of 66. That's quite a few people, to be honest. Moving on to question eight. How many Olympic medals were won by people on the Hall of Fame? Now, as I said before, Lyle, when I came to this question last time, hell of a lot more than some countries have won, which is A, 47. 
So your question, answer to question eight will be 47A, which is actually very impressive, to be honest. There were 66, on the hall of, 66 people on the Hall of Fame, and there's 47 medals. You've got to give them, that is, to be fair, is very, very impressive. Moving on to question nine. What is the oldest sport played in the UK? Question nine. What is the oldest sport played in the UK? We're going to go with, the answer to this one is polo B. So anyone who's uh, ever seen any polo, I've never seen polo to be honest, but I know you ride around horses with a long mallet and hit little balls hit little balls around. I've never seen polo in person, I can't say. But that is the oldest sport played in the UK, is polo. And finally, f first sport played on the moon, I think there's a famous shot of this one actually, of uh, I think it was Neil Armstrong, hitting a golf ball. So it's C, golf. Although... I think there could be a debate here so he actually played it because all he did was tee off a, tee off a golf, golf ball on the moon. But I would love to see a rugby game on the moon, I have to say, Arshner. That is a, I can't believe you, anyone would um, would fall for that one, but you never know. Shot put, I could definitely see though, so could have tricked some people out with that. And Arshner's telling me that one person in the Hall of Fame won 11 gold medals themselves. So that explains why there's so many. So if you didn't get any answers, here they are. Have a look through, tick them off, and if you let me know in the YouTube comments how many you got. And just give me a second, I'll, while you do that, I'm just going to go do something. So I'll let you catch up, mark them up, and uh, put them in the Discord chat and see how neck and neck we are with our with our two aspiring teams. Our our, our ex expert quiz master Matt with eight that round. Clearly, his experience on point has helped him. Nobody tell him though that he I, he got out within the first 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 round twice. So it can't have been that good, but hey, he tried. Team training got six. Not bad, team training. Arshna, if you want to jump in with team training, you don't know the answers to these ones, if you want to help them out, because they are a man, they are a, a man, slash, they are a man woman down, so feel free to jump in, because you don't know the answers to this. And I don't think anyone's going to be joining the lobby, so go for it. <laughs> I think a star star from Matt. That sums up his attitude there. I'll wait for Arshner to drop down, and then we'll head on to my little inventive round. So, this one is a bit of one I've created, is what country are you in if? So this is, what you'll get asked a question, what country are you in if you're in London? No one can get this one wrong, the answer is obviously England, but there'll be some pictures to help you out, or maybe not help you out, depending. Um, and we'll see how you get on. So, starting question one, with a nice and easy one. What country are you in if you stand underneath the Arc de Triomphe? What country are you in if you stand underneath the Arc de Triomphe? You'll notice here there is no multiple choice. Because there's countries, I didn't think multiple choice was really needed. And um, But we'll see how you do in the end. With my the six people in the uh, Discord and the other four watching around. So, question two. What country are you in if you visit the Shire from the critically acclaimed trilogy, Lord of the Rings? What country are you in if you visit the Shire from the critically acclaimed trilogy, Lord of the Rings? I will be very clear here. This is not a mystical made-up country. It, it does actually exist on planet Earth in a country. So I'm looking for a country on Earth, no um, Middle Earth or anything like that. It is a legitimate country, so we'll see if anyone knows the answer to this one. Excuse me. So, moving on to question three. What country are you in? If you reach the peak of Mount Fiji, 
What country are you in if you reach the peak of Mount Fiji? Fun fact about Mount Fiji, I actually had to paint it once in school. Wasn't any good at it, and still not good at painting. But there's your fun fact about Fiji. Not actually about Fiji, but about me, so. I've also, f oh, I also had an f interesting time flying up it in Flight Simulator. Tell you what, it's bloody high, but as you can probably see from the picture it is, so don't think you needed me to tell you that. So what country are you in if you reach the peak of Mount Fiji? So, question four. What country are you in if you stand across the rim, stared across the rim of the Barringer Crater? What country are you in if you stared across the rim of the Barringer Crater? This is a large impact crater. Um, I won't tell you where, because that's the question. But um, I think it's about 20, 30 kilometers across, so it's absolutely massive. And you can see on the picture there how small a building is compared to the size of it. And so I'll move on to question five. What continent are you in if you, sh if you shake hands or flippers with an emperor penguin? What continent are you in if you shake hands, flippers with an emperor penguin? Now, this isn't a country, so careful on the c on the question. It says continent, so that should make it a bit easier as there's not that many continents. And let's put it this way. Europe does not look like that. Well, it's not any part of Europe I've been to. So there's your clue. It's not Europe. Moving on to question six. What country are you in if you kayak across Loch Ness? What country are you in if you kayak across Loch Ness? Now, this is a nice and easy question. And yes, this country is a country. If anyone wants to get into the technicality of it, I can explain the technicality of it. But it is a country, trust me. I did look into this. So question six. What country are you in if you kayak across Loch Ness? Moving on to question seven. What country are you in if you explored the ancient ruins of Babylon? And question seven. What country are you in if you explored the ancient ruins of Babylon? There's some pictures there. Of some eight of, I think, taken from the ruins themselves. A very long time ago. And the sea is very quite degraded. But you'll get an idea of what kind of country it might be in with the colour of it. So moving on to question eight. What country are you in if you stood in the southernmost city on the planet, Ushuina. What country are you in if you stood in the southernmost city of the planet, Ushuina? There. Clearly the picture is not of a city, but that picture is taken from near to the city, I can assure you. So, gives you some, I might give you a little bit of clue. I'm not sure though. Moving on to question nine. What country are you in if you explored the Serengeti National Park. What country are you in if you explored the Serengeti National Park? Now this one's a little little tricky. It's not necessarily what you think it is originally, but we'll see how people get on with this. But So question nine, what country are you in if you explored the Serengeti National Park? So question 10. Final one for the third round. We're getting really through these now, about 10, 50 minutes around. But... What country are you in if you froze in the coldest city on Earth, Yaktsuk? What country are you in if you froze in the coldest city on Earth, Yaktsuk? There. Quite a tough one to pronounce, I have to say, but that might give you some indication of what the what the what the location is. But we'll see how people get on. Again, I'm going to ask that anyone in chat could just type in if they're ready to move on. I'm going to uh, sit on question one again while I wait for some responses and take a sip of water. So if a representative from a team wants to chuck a thumbs up, just let me know they, if they want, they're happy to move on to the answers or if they want another question.
I'm going to assume by the absence of anything, although the chat is a little bit slow, that we can move on and go through the answers. So, the answers for this round. Question one. I think they're going to be surprised to nobody. Question one, the answer is France. So if you stand underneath the Arc de Triomphe, you'll be in France. Moving on to two. I just see some thumbs up coming through there. Excellent. What country are you in if you visit the Shire from the Lord of the Rings? So this one is New Zealand. They filmed it. They filmed a lot of Lord of the Rings in New Zealand and also built a Hobbit in there. And when the, the set was torn down, I think, about ten years ago, and they rebuilt it to, uh, as a tourist attraction, it's very famous. You also can get some beer and proper Hobbit mead in, if anyone's interested. Some place I'd like to go, to be honest. So yeah, the uh, question, question two, the answer is New Zealand. Question three. What country are you in if you reach the peak of Mount Fiji? That one's Japan. So, yep. Yeah, Japanese mountain there. Not much more to say there. Question four. What country are you in if you stir stirred across the rim of the boundary crater? So, this one's in Arizona. Uh, the USA, I think. And if you mention Arizona, Matt is going to go off on, off on one as well. So, I'm expecting some more stars from Matt after that comment, but we'll see. So moving on to question five, what's the answer for that? What continent? Now, again, I gave you a clue it wasn't Europe, that's for sure. But it, but it, it, what it is, is Antarctica. No surprise to anybody there. So question five, the answer is Antarctica. Question six, what country are you in if you kayak across the Loch Ness? Now, this one was also going to surprise nobody being in Scotland. Nice, a classic, classic one, that one. Kai Cross Loch Ness is Sco Scotland. And there's everyone. Uh, and uh, Scotland is a country, I will assure you. It's a nation of nations, interestingly enough. Question seven. What country are you in if you explored the ancient ruins of Babylon? Now, this one is um, Iraq. A lot of them have actually been destroyed um, by actions in the Middle East and wars in the Middle East, but some of them still do exist. And but they are mm, probably not massively safe to explore these days, but they are there and they are... Very beautiful. So question seven is Iraq. Question eight. What country are you in if you stood in the most southern city on the planet, Ushuenia? Now this one is Argentina. You obviously if you picture the map of Argentina, it's at the very bottom of the map. Ushuenia. Ushuenia. Yep. So yeah. Question eight. Argentina. Question nine. What country are you in if you explored the Serengeti National Park? Now this one's Tanzania. Uh, Tan Tanzania? T yeah, Tanzania, sorry. And some people might say Kenya, and you'd be close, because the Serengeti does go through Kenya, but the Serengeti National Park is in Tanzania. So, there you go. Question 10. What country are you in if you froze in the coldest city on Earth? Yaksuk. Now, this one is Russia. I think it's an unsurprise to nobody. Maybe Alaska, but someone might have said, and you're probably close with that, but it is Russia. Yaksuk is in Russia, and I'm going to move on to, I'm going to stay here for a second, and I'm just going to turn the quiz off, and we'll have a quick break. I'm going to pop into the Discord, and um, just pause the stream for a bit, and if people want to come out to the lobby and chat, they can do, or we can sit on our teams. It's up to anyone, really. I'm just going to have a little bit, we're going to just have a little bit of a break.
So, returning to the quiz, I will move on. I'll move on to the next round when everybody is set up and ready. If you give me a quick thumbs up when all your team is situated, because I can see Becca still sitting in the Discord. So, give me a thumbs up in the chat when you're ready to get on with it. We'll go got the fourth round of the quiz. A bit of general knowledge. Also, I think I'm getting some microphone feedback now, so I'm just going to turn it down a little bit. Turn it down a little bit. There we go. That should be back to being a bit normal. Some decent microphone. Right now, I've balanced that out. We will um, head on, and we'll head off in the next round. Let me just bring the quiz up. There we go. You see there the answers for the last round. I don't know who's in the lead yet, but I'm sure people can work it out. So, a bit of general knowledge. It was just a classic general knowledge, a bit of mishmash from everywhere. Um, some interesting facts and some classic quiz questions that you see everywhere. So, question one. What is the oldest university in the world? Question one. What is the oldest university in the world? Oxford, Siena, or Bologna? Yeah. Oxford, Siena, or Bologna? So, you can see here. Which one of these three is the oldest university in the world? The first one's in, first one's in Britain. The other two are in Italy. So, And they all start off as religious theological colleges. And so, th but there is an oldest out of the three, so we'll see how we get on. Question two. In which century was Guinness first brewed? 1600s, 1700s, and 1800s. Becca, I need a report from you if you get this one right or not. If you don't, I think, you, I think everyone is going to be very disappointed, so that's a warning. Get this one right, Becca. In which century was Guinness first brewed? 1600s, 1700s, or 1800s? I'm expecting good things. Moving on to question three. What is the name of the fictional town where the series Stranger Things is set? What is the name of the fictional town where the series Stranger Things is set? Is it Hawkins, Pawnee, or Stars Hollow? So is it A, Hawkins, B, Pawnee, or C, Stars Hollows? I've never seen Stranger Things, so... I wouldn't, well, I wouldn't know because I, I wrote the quiz, but yeah. We'll see how many people have watched Stranger Things. So question four, what colour is the front of a giraffe's tongue? Pink, purple, or brown? Very interesting on this. What colour is the front of a giraffe's tongue? Pink, purple, or brown? And this is one you either know or you don't really. It's kind of hard to have a guess at, but we'll see. We'll see. I'm ex question five, who won the FIFA's Women's World Cup in 2019? Was it the USA? A. B. The Netherlands. Or C. England. Who won the FIFA Women's World Cup in 2019? The USA? The Netherlands? Or England? All, th all three of them were in the top four. So it's quite a close little net, net one. So if anyone, I don't know if anyone watched it. You obviously would know the answer. But it was only last year. So it's still pretty recent memory, I think. Question six. Which country was the first to give women the right to vote in 1893? However, this country did not give them the right to hold office, just the right to vote. Was it A, New Zealand, B, Finland, or C, Norway? Which country was the first to give women the right to vote in 1893? New Zealand, Finland, or Norway? Moving on to question seven. What does IPA stand for? Irish Pale Ale, Indiana Proof Ale, or India Pale Ale. So what does IPA stand for? Irish Pale Ale, Indiana Proof Ale, or India Pale Ale? Nice range of options there. So we'll see how people, if anyone can put out the right answer for that one. 
Another interesting one, a bit of general knowledge here. How many sitting US presidents have been assassinated? Is it A, 2, B, 3, and C, 4? And brownie points, if anyone can name all four when we get to the answers. I'll give it a couple of... So get ready with all four when we get to the answer to this question. If you can post in the chat and your brownie points if you get the right answer of all four. But uh, all three or all two, to be honest. Because it could be two, three, or four. I may have given that away, actually. We'll see. Question nine. What is the chemical symbol for silver? Is it A, A, G, B, S, I, or C, A, U? What is the chemical symbol for silver? A, A, G, B, S, I, or C, A, U? Any of those, there's chemistry will know this one, but back, we're back into GCC chemistry land. So question 10. What is the lifespan of a dragonfly? Is it A, 11 months, B, 3 months, or C, 6 months? What is the lifespan of a dragonfly? A month, 3 months, or 6 months? So if you need any other questions repeating, chuck it in the chat. I'm going to sit here at question 1 for a second. If you're good to go, send me a thumbs up and we'll, we'll go through the answers. And see how many team training and team... I don't know what the other team's called. Team training and team other gets. Just keep an eye on the chat, and we'll see what go. We'll see if anything anything comes through. If not, I'll head straight on with the answers. So, with nothing said there, I think we'll go on to the answers. Question one: the answer is C, Bologna. In Italy, so that's the answer to question one is C. Beats out Oxford by 10 years. So there we go. So move question two. In which century was Guinness first brewed? Becca, you better get this one right. B, 1700s. Answer to, answer to question two is B, the 1700s. Uh, anyone, in, whoever's in Becca team, let's have a look. Uh, Ashna or Mike? I want an update if Becca got that one right. Question three. What is the name of the fictional town where the series Stranger Things is set? So that's A, Hawkins. So answer to question three is A, Hawkins. Moving on to question four. What colour is the front of a giraffe's tongue? Now, this one is B, purple. Uncon unconventional colour I have to say but it is purple B oh, I got a response from Arshner saying Becca got that Guinness one so congratulations and well done you're not you're not a disappointment to Ireland Becca you're not a disappointment you've succeeded in the test you've passed the test question 5 who won the FIFA Women's World Cup in 2019 so this one was A United States of America so who won the FIFA World Cup in 2019 was A, the USA. Question 6. Which country was the first to give women the right to vote in 1893? So the answer to this one is New Zealand. Now some people might think it's the Scandinavian countries and they do closely follow 10 or 20 years later. But in 1863 New Zealand gave women the right to vote. Moving to question 7. A classic quiz question that must comes up on every pub quiz that I do, is what does IPA stand for? Now, the answer to this one is obviously C, India Pale Ale. Any of the... I don't know. There's some, some people might get this one. No, people probably have heard this one before. But question seven. What does IPA stand for? C, India Pale Ale. So I think I might have given this away one when I did it. But how many sitting US presidents have been assassinated? That would be four. If you've you got the names, chuck them in the chat. And I'll... Uh, 
comment on it when we get to the end, but and no Googling either. I know what you guys are like. Question nine. What is the chemical symbol for silver? A G? S I or A U? The answer is A A G. Silver the chemical symbol for si silver is A A G. Those who GCSE chemistry will might hark back to the days. But yeah. Question ten. What is the lifespan of a dragonfly? This one is six months. So that's C six months is the lifespan of a dragonfly. I'll put the other answers up here. And I'll await to see if anyone has got the four US presidents assassinated or at least or at least two. I think at least two is would be the next brownie point level before I give the, the four. I'll just sit here for a second, letting um, people to catch up and tick off. And also, if you can give me the number of questions you've got right, team training and team other, which is what I'm calling you now, feel free to type them in the chat. And then we're going to go on to our nightline round after that. And we're expecting good things from our six contestants. James, I'm expecting good things with Nightline history since you've been you've been around for the longest. But so I'm just expecting the best from you on this one. Eight out of ten from team training. Oh, nice. On the US presidents, we have the US presidents of um, let's have a little look at the four there. We have Kennedy, Lincoln, Garfield, and McKin McKin McKinsley. The latter two mostly died of their wounds, to be honest. Um, and Kennedy and Lincoln are the two famous ones, so the more you know. So moving on to Nightline. Facts and history. How much you know or guess about Loughborough Nightline? Question one. When was Loughborough Nightline first opened? 2012? 2015 or 2017? So that's 2012, 2015 or 2017? Ah, oh, Arsenal's reporting to me it's a tie, so there we go. Well, it is apt. Whoever knows, knows the most about Nightline will end up winning the day here. So, And if not, we might have to find a tiebreaker. I, question two, I said, when is the name? It's more like to be, what is the name of the Luff, Loughborough Nightline's mascot? Is it Oswald, Oliver, or Oscar? So that's, what is what is the name of the Loughborough Nightline mascot? Oswald, Oliver, or Oscar? And those of you that did the, have written the website, or looked at the website, this is it's taken straight from there. So a classic one there. What percentage of students experience some degree of psychological distress while at university? Is it A, 50%, B, 65%, or C, 75%? So it's what percentage of students experience some degree of psychological stress while at university? Uh, quite an interesting figure, that, but we'll see, how people get, see if anyone can remember from the website. Question four. Now, of all our current committee members, if you get this wrong... So you need someone these having words. But what days of the week is Loughborough Nightline open? Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday. Monday, Wednesday, Friday, or Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday. Now, if any, if any if any of the people in the teams collectively get this wrong, I think we definitely need to have words. So question five. How many nightlines are there across the UK? Now, this is a little little tougher. Thirty one, thirty six, or forty nine. How many nightlines are there across the UK? 31, 36, or 49? So, moving into question six. As of today, how many calls has Loughborough Nightline had since it was founded? Now, this is as of eight o'clock today, so before the shift started, so half an hour ago. But as of today, how many calls has Loughborough Nightline had since it was founded? 2037, 2272, or 3456? So I'm moving on to question seven. Which night lines which night lines are Loughborough sisters? Two of there's obviously two. Which night lines are Loughborough sisters? Leeds and Sheffield, Durham and Manchester, Leicester and Nottingham. Is it A Le Leeds and Sheffield? 
B, Durham, Manchester. And C, Leicester and Nottingham. Again, a slightly more tougher net one now than the other ones. And moving on to question A. This is a one for which I had no. I know Arshner's going to get right because I asked her the question, so no talking, Arshner. How many welfare and diversity associations are there at Loughborough Students' Union? Seven, nine, or eleven? Now, I'm, it's, I, I would expect people to get these, but it could be a bit difficult one. And Arshner, again, don't help your team on this one because you know the answer. Finally, what on question nine. What is Nightline's motto? Always here to talk. It takes a community to make, maintain a human or will listen, not lecture. Again, I'm expecting pretty much every team to get this one right. I'm expecting about eight, 7 out of 10, 8 out of 10 for this one, but it's going to eke out who have the slightly better one, so it's worked out quite nicely. So what is Nightline's motto? Is it A, always here to talk, B, it takes community to maintain a human, or C, it will listen, not lecture? And the final question of the quiz. What is Loughborough Nightline's number? Can you remember it off the top of your head? Because it isn't actually anywhere here. Although it is on the slide beforehand. Is it A, 01509227650? Is it B, 01509227227? Or C, 01509227890? And when we finish this question, go on to the answers, if no one is repeated. I'm going to put in the chat which questions your team got wrong. And we're going to see and compare. Because nothing like a bit of... Um, there will be a finding out what Nightline committees don't know about their own organisation. So, give me a thumbs up in the uh, in the chat if you're ready to move on, and we'll s finish up with the answers. I've been going on for about six to eight minutes now. Probably finish up about 70, 80 minutes, but a nice little quiz for a Monday evening. I'm guessing, yep, that's a thumbs up from Arsenal, which means we're probably good to go. So remember, whichever one she got wrong, chuck them in the chat. Oh, we want to see it. Uh, so question one. When will Loughborough Nightlines first open? That would be 2015, B, 2015. Five years ago, I think, it, five years ago in May. Uh, five years ago it was in May, so. Miss that anniversary, thanks to, uh, yeah. But such it is. Question two. The name of Loughborough Nightline's mascot is, of course, Oscar. Our lovely Al Oscar. With a picture of him right there. So, question three. From the website, what percentage of students experience some degree of psychological distress whilst at university? That is C, 75%, which is a humongous figure. 75%. So, yeah. Not much more to say, but apart from how larger a figure the C, 75% actually is. So, the answer to that question is C. So question number four, what days of the week is Loughborough Nylon open? And again, if any committees get this wrong, hmm, I have to have words. So the answer to this one is A, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday. So the answer to this one is A. Question five, how many Nylons are there across the UK? A little more difficult one. And for those that, so this one is B, 36. So we've got 36 across the UK. What's the question five is B? Moving on to question six. As of today, how many calls have, have we had? That's 2,272. So B, that's a, quite a lot of calls over the last five years, or just over five years now. So B, 2272. Moving on to question seven. Which nightline is love for sisters? This one is A, Leeds and Sheffield. All the sisters really means is we talk a bit more and we have um, some share some information with them. But yeah, so and our volunteers can call other nightlines. So A is Leeds and Sheffield. So if you if you ever can't get to us or we're not open, feel free to call them. So moving on to question eight: How many welfare and diversity associations are there at Loughborough Students Union? And Arsenal, I hope you didn't help your team out this one, but this one is nine. 
So the answer to that question, question eight is nine. So moving on to question nine, what is Nightline's motto? Again, all the committee, you really should be getting this one, which is obviously C, or listen, not lecture. So what is Nightline's motto? C, or listen, not lecture. And for the final answers of the quiz, a question that some committee will only answer to and some most definitely won't is what is love for Nightline's number? This one is, of course, A, 01509227650. Final answer to the question is A. So, check your answers off, count your scores, and we'll see how everyone did. And then I will, once everyone's, p add up all the, add up all the, if you can add up all the scores you got from all the rounds and chuck them in the chat, we'll see which team won. And post which questions you got wrong for the Nightline round for a bit of, a bit of a, bit of a laugh, and then we'll end the stream there and head back into Discord. Holly with a 10 out of 10. Nice work, Holly. 10 out of 10. I'm impressed. Well, no, I would say, to be fair, I shouldn't be impressed because you damn well should have done. But, um, so there's uh, Team Other, as I'm calling them, with 33. And we'll see how Team Training have done. Not sure it was particularly fair with three veteran Nightline volunteers with three... Oh, Becca's, Becca and Mike are pretty veterans, so they probably should have it. 9 out of 10. Oh, so close. Which one did you get wrong, Mike? I mean, I'm still pr pretty proud and impressed with 9 out of 10. Ooh, I see. So 34 still from... Um, Mike. So the polls of Arsenal's polls were wrong. Turns out that team training may have just eked out. So there's that's all for the quiz. I'm going to pop back in Discord now. Thank you for those who participated in watching and thanks for every, all the committee for coming along. But yeah, I'm just going to fade out a bit and I'll